day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. So they, they, they spotting up their garments of righteousness mm -hmm. through the lust and the affections of the flesh. Now, they, but they were he said, he said that you, 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 you got to deal with that. Oh, you got to deal with it. Because a little leaven. Uh-huh. Yeah. But what, 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 what are we saying about those people? You got, you got some have compassion. And then moving into a compassion, I guess, another form of love. But Jesus was moved by compassion sometimes to, you know, heal people and, and uh, I guess, do things for people. Have you ever met somebody? Have you ever met somebody who you since had a very deep love for God? That God was doing something very genuine and authentic in their life. But because they've never been with somebody that really disciple them, never been with somebody that really could tell them really meaningful stuff from scripture, they had this kind of jacked up view of who God is. Yeah. I, I, I talked to one of my classmates uh, this week. You know, I only started talking to her because her mom passed away. I went to the funeral. And at a funeral, when I got, when I got the... Uh, program, I didn't realize that that girl was brought up in church, man. Mm -hmm. like, I went to high school with the girl from ninth grade to high, all the way through high school and had some interaction with her after high school. I never knew she was raised up and brought up. This, this, this girl was in church every Sunday. Right, right. Good Lord. But I couldn't, I didn't never, because I'm just a blind as a bat back then, so I, I ain't really noticing I noticed she's kind of carrying herself in a respectful way. She's very friendly. But I didn't know she was about to church. Right. I was, I've, been, I've been talking with her since her mom died. Just kind of, because I know they can be a very, that can be a very impactful thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though her mama was a hundred years old. Come on. <laughs> and so we got to talk about, we got to talk about church. Yeah. And we got to talk about it. And so I'm, I'm very cautious because I'm like, okay, you brought up in church and you probably believe all this crazy stuff they told you. Right. So be careful. So I told her, I said, you know, you know, there's a lot of things that we were taught in church with this flat out jacked up and wrong. She mm. said, you got to know. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, so you know there's a lot of this stuff. So that's yeah, okay, well, you know that then. Then I started talking to her about some things. And when I kind of said that, I said that very genuine desire to know God. But after having moved on from there, that there seems to not to have been a whole lot of exposure to some real serious, in-depth looking in scripture to really see who God is for real, not just this, you know. Right. You know sometimes you ever took a picture that was blurred. Yeah, yeah. See, sometimes you go to scripture, you walk away with a blurred view of God. <laughs> and you walk around serving that blurred God. Right. You know, that, I, that, that's not a bad thing. Right. But I'm saying you ought not to stay with that blurred picture. Yeah. Now right. go go you ought to realize there's something wrong with this picture. Right, right. That picture, that picture ought to start clearing up as time go on. <laughs> yeah. Only hey, look, there's a, only if the place where you're being ministered to is trying to lead you into that clear picture, right? I, and the only reason I'm going to throw that at you is that if we look at the church for the United States from slavery up to now, how could the atrocities, you know, the, 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 the brutality uh, be dominant in something where people still say this is a Christian nation, easy. Un ungodly men crept in on the way. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And they kept it thinking that way, right? I mean, that's what I'm saying. So the people that show up. And they begin to recruit ungodly men. Yeah. <laughs> they, they bring them in. 
the other word, it, it, it looks like the 10, 10. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed in him. I, I'm just realizing that we just have to take the state for what it is. Now, Jude said, Enoch prophesied about it, and Jesus' apostle foretold, one told you they were coming. He did. So, so in, in, in verse number uh, 14, it says, and Enoch also, the servant from Adam, the servant from Adam, prophesied of thee. He, he, what he prophesied, he said the Lord, what, what he prophesied, uh, Enoch, the servant of Adam, prophesied of thee. Now he's talking about the stuff above. He's talking he, about the whole category of men that do are in the same category as these men in breast number four. Mm. And then somebody said the apostle told you. And it what what Paul did. We all remember you the word which we were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their ungodly lust. Huh. Yeah, I know I know Paul talked about it. It, it seems like there's been a warning throughout throughout the history of the Bible then. Yes. Cause even because the nature of what God is doing is so delicate. So intricately delicate. That that thing that thing can go either way. Yeah. When you hear that truth, you gotta decide how much you're willing to sacrifice for. That's, that's why that's why to me when we sing that song I surrender all. I I that's the most powerful song that a human being could ever sing. Yeah. You stand before God and open your mouth and declare I surrender all. That's a serious statement. Right, right. I, <laughs> you know, I, 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 it just it just it's, it's interesting that, like I said, is that a lot of us it's so easy to refer back to the. You know, when you're in Galatians, and who be with you to, 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 to go back to the law? That that goes mean. That means you switch back to carnality, right? Well, what that means is, is that you never really truly broke with it. Oh Lord! Now, 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 I'm just saying. All this <laughs> is is that you never truly broke with it. Broke with it. Okay, okay. You still you still got some ties, you still left some you still left some doors on. You weren't really the you weren't really the, the you know, you weren't really the killing him. They cut his arm off. <laughs> you when you came in. <laughs> cut for the leg now. Cut the guys out for the eyes. But the scripture say, no, he got to be crucified. Right. Die look, look, Paul said you gotta die daily. Yes, sir. And not only got to crucify him, you got to keep him dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I think I think when you talk about what Elder was talking about was how to do that. You know, this, that, let's talk about that. How to keep the old man buried? No, the the first question is the first first question is not to keep the old man buried. The first question is, do you want him dead? <laughs> well, you know, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait, wait. Let, 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 let. See, that's the first question right there. The wait. first question is, we've got to come to terms with this. Do you want him completely, absolutely, and totally dead? Well, well let's see now. We're moving. Let, let, they, they came out of Egypt. We got to use that as an example. They, they, they brought him out of bondage to take the man to the promised land. Many times they murmured and complained with the last result of going back to bondage. Remember that one scripture that was talking about there was onions and leech and melon where they came from. So, so there was some there were some pleasures where they came from, even though it was bondage. Well, let me illustrate that for you. <laughs> Give <you an> illustration. <laughs> this is a song, this is saving a lot of words. That would be like a man on death row in prison. Yeah. 
that they finally came to and found out he was not didn't commit the crime. They brought him out. Okay. And he's out looking back at the prison and saying, you know, they had good food in there. <laughs> they had to, hey, look, that's when they give the last meal, right? <laughs> they gonna give me, they gonna give me a steak. <laughs> they hear you talking about it. They done, they done got him off death row. <laughs> they done gave him freedom. And he's standing looking, you know, they had good food in there, man. <laughs> Woo! I heard had a great cafeteria. <laughs> He, he ne ne neglected the fact that he's got his freedom. He's been delivered. His mind is still on the good food. You know, they had a good library in there, man. They had a good, did such, such a good program. He, he totally missed the point. 